Over a hundred years ago, Europeans discovered a fishing village called Bei Dai He on the coast of the Bohai Sea. Wealthy Chinese and foreign diplomats built villas and transformed Bei Dai He into a popular summer destination. When the CCP took power, it confiscated the estates and has used them as its leader's summer resort for work and recuperation. It's there that many gatherings and meetings are held behind closed doors and where the various factions negotiate and fight over power. After the Bei Daihe retreat this year, rumor has it that Xi Jinping has a successor now. Who is this man and is she really stepping down? And if so, will the new leader make a difference in the world's largest communist country? Hello everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. A fan asked me who might replace Xi Jinping one day and where China could be headed after she is gone. I thought those are excellent questions, so this video addresses them. Recently, one of the Politburo Standing Committee members, Wang Yang, got promoted in rank. On August the 17th, Xi Jinping presided over the 10th meeting of the Chinese Communist Party's Finance and Economic Central Committee. Five of the seven Politburo Standing Committee members attended, including Wang. By the way, the seven-member Politburo Standing Committee is the CCP's highest governing body. One who usually ranks last among the five members now ranks third after Xi Jinping and China's Premier Li Keqiang. More interestingly, on August the 18th, Wang led a delegation to Lhasa to attend the 70th anniversary of the CCP's takeover of Tibet. Ten years ago, during the 60th anniversary celebration, Xi Jinping attended the event. And ten years before that, in 2001, Hu Jintao participated at the 50th anniversary of the takeover. When Xi and Hu attended the past celebrations, they were both the designated next CCP leader at the time. The fact that Wang Yang participated in the same event as Xi and Hu sent a strong signal. Most importantly, on the 23rd, Taiwan's Liberty Times reported that, according to an unnamed source from top officials returning from Bei Dai He, Wang Yang would succeed Xi Jinping as the next CCP leader after the 20th National Congress next year. Wang Yang came from an ordinary Chinese family. His father was the party secretary of a county food company, and his mother was a clerk at a small food and tobacco retailer. In 1972, when Wang was 17 years old, his father died. His mother couldn't raise three children, so he dropped out of school and worked in a local food factory. He was active and soon became the secretary of the Communist Youth League at the factory. Later, the CCP sent him to study politics and economics at the Central CCP School, the highest educational institute where CCP leaders are trained. After the Tiananmen Square massacre, when China slowed down its reform, he took a political risk and published an article that called for the emancipation of the mind. He was the mayor of Tongling City in Anhui when he wrote that article. In 1993, 38-year-old Wang was appointed the deputy governor of Anhui province, becoming the country's youngest deputy governor. Wang has worked in the state council, is said to be a rare financial and economic expert, and is currently the chairman of the National Committee of the People's Political Consultative Conference. He's seen as being a peacemaker. Some analysts regard him as a reformist, in recent years, he has become more hardline and has publicly praised Xi Jinping, calling Xi's speeches the shining light of truth. So will this man succeed Xi Jinping in 2022 as the CCP's next leader? Various Chinese language media outlets outside China have offered their analysis. Based on what I could gather, I think it's highly doubtful. There are several reasons why I think Wang will not succeed Xi. Xi Jinping isn't done with what he wants to do yet. Even though the anti-Xi forces inside and outside China have been working together to take him down for the past eight years, his political enemies might have given him the very reason to stay for another term. During his eight years in power, 
She has investigated and prosecuted over 500 senior officials through his anti-corruption campaign, including members of the Politburo, members of the Politburo's Standing Committee, generals, lieutenant generals, ministers, deputy ministers, provincial party secretaries, governors, and head of public security bureaus. Most of these people are affiliated with the Jen Zemin faction, she's biggest political enemy, and are seeking revenge. On March 4, 2016, one of Jen Zemin's cronies, Politburo member Zhang Chunxian, the CCP head of Xinjiang, had an open letter published in Xinjiang that called for Xi Jinping's resignation. The open letter was audacious and threatened the well-being of Xi's family three times if he doesn't resign. The power struggle among communist leaders isn't about winning or losing, it's about life and death. From Xi's perspective, he must hold on to power and keep on fighting. When you are in the middle of an ugly fight, it's hard to quit. In 2007, Xi Jinping was 54 and became the designated heir of Hu Jintao, who was 65 years old at the time. In 1992, when Hu Jintao was appointed as the heir to succeed Jiang Zemin, Hu was 50 years old and Jiang was 66. Xi Jinping is now 68 and Wang Yang is 66. Choosing a successor who is only two years younger doesn't help Xi's political longevity, nor does it preserve his legacy. Both Hu Jintao and Xi Jinping were the designated heirs chosen by the elders of the Chinese Communist Party. Before taking the top position, Hu and Xi both were prepared by serving at a number of key posts within the party, such as being a member of the Politburo Standing Committee, the secretary for the Secretariat of the Central Committee, the president of the CCP's Central Party School, vice chairman of the state, and vice chairman of the Central Military Commission. Even Xi's political enemy, Zhen Qinghong, who was once the successor Jiang Zemin chose to succeed Hu Jintao, held these positions after the 16th National Congress in 2002. But due to Zeng's poor reputation and the opposition from the other CCP leaders, she eventually replaced him as Hu's successor. So far, no one has been trained or prepared as Xi's successor. She is still the most powerful figure controlling the party, the government, and the military. Just like some media claimed, Xi Jinping's only successor is Xi himself. Xi Jinping has very few people he can trust. When he first came to power, he built his alliances by promoting people from three connections those who had worked for him, his Tsinghua University alumni, and old contacts from Shanxi, his home province. But over the years, many didn't stay loyal to him. Among the current seven members of the Politburo Standing Committee, Wang Huning, Han Zhen, and Zhao Leji belong to the Jiang Zemin's faction. Even though Li Keqiang isn't on their side, Li and Xi are known to be at odds. Xi's only close ally besides himself, of course, is Li Zhanshu. So within a committee of seven, Xi has three on the opposing side and one not friendly. The seventh member, our protagonist, Wang Yang, is a moderate and maintains the same distance with all parties. He has a normal working relationship with Xi Jinping, but is not a close ally. It's unlikely that Xi will hand over the supreme power of the CCP to someone who isn't a close ally. Many people don't like Xi Jinping and hope to see him replaced. Actually, it makes no difference who the leader is as long as the CCP exists in China. This is because the party or CCP itself controls the leader and whoever's in that position must do things that suit the party. If you put a good person in that position, he will either be removed or turn bad to do terrible things. Just like when Xi Jinping first came to power, many people thought that he would make a difference. But being in his position, he had to do what the communist system requires him to. 
His only way to get out of this predicament is to end communism in China, like Gorbachev ended communism in the USSR. If you don't get rid of the CCP and just get rid of Xi Jinping, you may end up with a Wang Jinping, Li Jinping, or a Mao Jinping, who is no different from Xi Jinping. You might ask me, if Xi Jinping doesn't intend to make Wang his successor, why did Wang's ranking suddenly get boosted? And where does the rumor about Wang come from? They are very good questions. I'll explain them in the next video. Subscribe and stay tuned.